Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our C Sharp for Automation testing video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about C Sharp patterns. And in this video, we'll be talking all about the pattern matching in C Sharp, which was introduced all the way in C Sharp 7 and we'll be discussing until C Sharp 10 and all its features. So C Sharp introduced the pattern matching in C Sharp 7.0 version. And since then, each major C Sharp version extends the pattern matching capabilities. The following C Sharp expressions and statements supports pattern matching, like is expression, switch statements, and switch expression, which was introduced in C Sharp 8, and it's also extended even further in C Sharp 9 and 10. So we'll see all these things one by one in this particular video. So before we jump into the C-sharp pattern, the C-sharp pattern actually has got different expressions to match the pattern itself. Something like declaration and type patterns, constant patterns, relational and logical patterns, property patterns, positional patterns, var patterns, and discard patterns. So this discard pattern is something which is kind of discarded from version C-sharp 8.0 and now in C-sharp 9 it has been completely replaced. So that's the cool thing about the discard pattern which will not be talking about, we have discarded this discussion itself, but these are the expressions that we'll be seeing completely in this particular video. So let's jump into all these patterns and you will understand what I really mean. For example, this is a simple classical switch case statement you might have seen. For example, in this particular method that you can see, we are trying to verify an email domain uh, if it has an uh, gmail.com domain name. So if it is the domain which has gmail.com, then it's a valid email domain. Hotmail, then it is valid email domain. Uh, if it's something else, then you can see that it's going to return you the invalid email domain address, something like this. So this is one of the switch case statements. You can write this in if else as well, but I'm using the switch case statement so that you can understand it more easily while we see the actual switch expression, something like this. So you can see that we have reduced these lines of code into just three lines of code, something like this. And it is doing exactly the same operation that you are seeing over here. So it says that return email, which is the string constant, switch of the gmail.com or, so this is another logical operation that you can do on the expressions, like switch expressions, and you can verify if gmail.com or hotmail.com, then it's a valid email domain. If it is something else, then it is an invalid domain. If there is nothing, then it's going to return you the invalid email domain. Pretty much the same thing that you are seeing over here into just three lines of code. So this is called as the logical patterns of switch expressions. So you can see that we have reduced the number of lines of code much, much lesser than compared to the classical way of doing it. We can do the same exact things with even more complex types. For example, a property pattern. Over here, the user is basically a type which is gonna have different properties in it. And if you want to verify if the user.email contains gmail.com, then you return the user. Or if a user's phone number uh, has the length of, I mean, greater than eight, then you return the user. And if the password contains dollar or hash, then return the user. So it can fall under any of these category. So the user can have hotmail.com, so the first statement will be skipped. Similarly, the length can be uh, less than eight, then the second statement will be skipped. If the third statement has to pass, then it should have a dollar or hash in it. So you could see that this is exactly the same switch case statement, but you can see the different keywords there. We have a when keyword and there is a lambda expression. So this is basically like a comparison that you can do. And similarly, for the user, we have created a local variable like user, something like this. And then we are doing a when to perform those operation, which is cool. So this is called as the property pattern. And this is even further extended in C sharp version 10, which we'll be discussing in the last slide of this particular video. And then comes the logical pattern with conjective and patterns. So this is like a logical pattern where we are doing something like this, like return the user salary switch. So you can see that I'm navigating to a specific property of the user type. And I'm telling if his salary is less than 10,000, then return zero. If his salary is greater than or equal to 10,000 and, so this is the conjective and while matching the statements and less than 20,000 then return 10 and greater than or equal to 20,000 and less than 30,000 then return 20, something like that. So this is another way of 
matching the patterns within switch case statement. So this is the another conjunctive and patterns. And you can also do something like positional patterns. So this positional pattern says that over here, I have a salary and tax percentage, and I'm gonna do something like this. If my salary is greater than or equal to 10,000 and greater than 10 for the tax percentage, then he is a taxpayer category A. And if his salary is less than or equal to 20,000 and less than 20 for the tax percentage, then he is a taxpayer category B, something like that. So this is like a hypothetical uh, situations. I've just created like a method to show you how the positional patterns works, but you could just relate how it works with the real time example. This is cool. So you don't have to write a lot of if conditions or switch cases to perform testing of each and every single properties to be verified. Over here, it is very, very simple. So this is the positional patterns of switch statement. And then var patterns. Var pattern is another amazing pattern where it can be used along with the is expression if you really wanted to. And you can see that we are creating a local var variable like var of email and var of password within the named parameter over here. So for the user, we have a parameter called as email, but I'm also creating a local var variable, which I can use within this particular method, something like these. So you can verify email dot contains Gmail, password dot contains dollar or password contains hash, then return the user as user. So we're doing an as user. Uh, and then if there is nothing, then just return null. So this is the way that you could do the pattern matching with var pattern along with is expression if you really wanted to. And then constant patterns. So this constant pattern is very, very helpful if you have worked with any other automation testing tools like Selenium, where you would like to return a browser driver, then probably you can just do something like this. So this browser driver type that you are seeing over here in the parameter is basically an enum type. And we're just matching it based on the enum type and returning the driver, something like this. So you can relate the same thing with any of the type. It can be a string constant, and then you can pass it, and then you can return the value that you're looking for as well. So that's about the constant pattern. And finally, in C Sharp 10, they introduce what is called as an extended property pattern, which helps you match the value within a property of a complex type. For example, in user, we have a address property, which is of a type address. Again, that's a different property altogether. And if I want to match the city with its name as Bangalore, then just return me something like a Bangalore colon Karnataka, something like that. So that's that's how you, I'm gonna be doing like a get formatted address in this particular method. So this is the all new C Sharp 10 feature. So in order to use this particular feature, you should have C Sharp 10, which is available on .NET 6.0, which is still in preview state. You can download it and you can update your project to that and that starts working for you. So that's about the extended property patterns. So we'll see all these things and understand how things work in this particular video. So for that, I'm gonna switch to my Visual Studio Code IDE. All right, so this is my already pre-set up project, which has got all the normal code that you can really expect. For example, I have something like a model, which has got the address for the complex type for the user. So you can see this user has got an address type, uh, which is gonna hold the address, something like these. And it also has a business logic class, which is gonna hold all the different methods, which we are gonna be trying out with different expressions that we just saw on the slide. And then it has a program.cs file, which is gonna hold a user initialization. And then it is gonna be called within this particular main method so that we can see what the business logic is gonna do for us based on the data that we are passing in from the initialized user. So this is a very, very super simple C sharp class. And the most important thing which I did in this particular project is I'm actually using .NET 6.0, which is the target framework. So make sure that you use it because the constant pattern matching will not work if you don't really have this particular .NET version. All right. So now let's try running this particular code and I will show you what I really mean. So if I just do .NET off run, this is going to execute the code for you and it's going to output the result, which is sitting within our console dot right line over here. So all it's returning is a valid email domain because as you can see over here, this particular user actually has got gmail.com in his domain. But now I'm gonna replace this to the switch expression that I was just talking about. So in order to work with a switch expression, I'm gonna write one more method over here. So let's write this public string 
of email domain verifier that's not classical basically and over here i'm going to pass the email and once again if you start seeing some of the syntaxes coming for me automatically so this is coming from my github copilot buddy he's doing all the magics for you over here and you can see that he's going to give you some suggestions which are more sensical but sometimes it gives you some nonsense suggestion as well but yeah we can just live with it what it is returning for us at the moment so you can see that in order to use the switch expression i'm going to do this return of the string email of the switch statements over here and then we are going to start returning the value that we are looking for for example if he's going to give us a gmail.com as the uh, email domain then that's a valid address so you can see that it's automatically telling me all these things based on the email verification that we have written over here so it does all the models for you and it start uh, doing things for you which is cool and if gmail.com or hotmail.com then you can see that's a valid email address or if it is going to be a xxx.com uh, or uh, xom.com something like that then it's going to be an invalid address if there is nothing then you can use this underscore or the discard pattern stuff that i was talking about you can just do like this uh, and then you can do an lambda expression and then invalid email domain something like this so this is like a default of the switch case statement which returns default value nothing matches that's it this is the only thing which we need to do and that's about the email verifier using the new switch expression with the logical pattern so let me just format this document with c sharp that looks pretty and now if i just go to this particular method and let's try doing this i'm just gonna hide this guy and i'm just gonna to the same exact thing is valid uh, email but I'm going to be using the email domain verifier instead of the classical and let's see if this code works pretty much as expected so I expect the result to return me the valid email domain which is cool and let's say if I return uh, pass this value over here in my domain save it and let's try running it you will see that it's going to return as the invalid email address which is cool so this is the uh, way that we can use the expressions or the switch expressions in c sharp using the normal logical pattern and the next one which i'm going to show you is how we can actually work with a property pattern in order to work with the property pattern all i'm going to do is i'm just going to create all new method over here and i will show you what i really mean about the property patterns so first i'm going to create a method which is going to return me the user from the get user and probably i'm going to take the parameter as the user and i'm going to write once again the switch statements something like this so return user switch and i'm going to say if this particular user has got an email which contains the gmail.com then just tell me that this is going to be a valid user something like this again this is a hypothetical method so don't take it that this is the right way of doing the coding but yeah this is just to show you how you could use the switch expression with the property patterns so i'm just going to create a local variable called as user and i'm going to use this when keyword so this when keyword is going to be used to verify when the user dot email contains gmail then return me the user something like this which is cool and it's going to complain me something because the user is something which is already there as a local variable there probably i'm going to change this to users over here so that complaint will be gone uh, and then i'm just going to do one more thing so if the user so you see that it automatically writes if i'm going to use the hotmail.com there uh, but that's not the one which i'm going to be using so i'm going to say if the user has a phone number which has the length uh, greater than eight probably then return me this particular user uh, if there is nothing just return me null using the default return type something like this so this is going to be for the get user method so i'm going to be using the exact same thing and we'll see if that really works so for doing that uh, is valid uh yeah user something like that i'm just gonna do the business logic username uh is it username verified no sometimes this is misleading uh 
by using the GitHub Copilot. And we forget what we are trying to do. All right. And then I'm just going to write a console dot write line and check the user if it's a valid user, which is cool. It's written code for me as well. Uh, and then I'm going to do a dot net run. That's going to tell me if it is a valid or not. It's going to be invalid because we don't really have that particular uh, user. So you see that it's written me null. Probably if I just put something uh, more formatted, which is going to give me good result, but it is not. Uh, but let's say I'm going to pass something like a cart mcat at gmail.com and I'm going to save this. And if I try running it this time, it is actually giving me uh, the user, which means it is actually uh, giving me that user which I'm looking for, right? So that then I can probably uh, get its uh, check user or maybe like get user his name. So I can just do the username, something like this. Let's try running it. And that gives me the name as John, which is cool. So this is how we can use the property pattern using the switch statement. And we have seen the rest of the things on the slide. So I'm not going to keep writing the same code again and again. Rather, I'm just going to copy paste some of the code which I have already written and I will show you how it actually works. So you can see that this is for the salary uh, and you can see that we are actually using uh, the pattern something like less than 10,000 then return me zero. If it is greater than or equal to 10,000 then uh, and if it is less than 20,000, then it's going to be doing something like this. So this is about the logical pattern and comparing how it actually works with the switch expression. And we can also do the same thing with the positional pattern, which I was just talking about on the slide, something like this over here. You can see that it is going to do the same thing. Like you're going to verify the salary and the tax percentage using the position and then we'll return the value out from it. So all the idea is going to be pretty much exactly the same. But the one thing which I wanted to show you this time is going to be the C sharps all new feature, which was something that you can use to verify the extended patterns. So in order to do that, let's do this public string of get formatted address. And then I'm not going to be basically giving the address rather you can use the address basically but i'm going to give you uh, the user as the parameter and then i'm going to say if so return uh, the user and i'm going to say and you can see that i'm using the braces over there which means i can use the property of the user straight away then i'm going to say address dot you can see that this is the extended property pattern of C sharp 10. We can use that. And you can see that it automatically su suggesting something for me over here. See if city is Bangalore and address dot state is Karnataka and the address is equal to India, then just give me some formatted address, something like this, which is cool. So you can do this as well if you really wanted to. Um, uh, but we don't have a country over here. And I'm not going to go with the suggestion with uh, the GitHub Copilot is telling me rather I'm going to write the code which I'm looking for. So I'm going to create a local variable using the var pattern as city, something like this. And then I'm going to say if and see, I'm, I can call the city over here, the local variable. And I'm going to say if the city is equal to Bangalore, then you just give me all these things over here, like user.street, city, uh, and state something like this, which is cool. I'm going to go with the suggestion of the GitHub Copilot this time. And it automatically do other things for me like this. Like see city, if it is Mumbai, then give me this. And if it is uh, Chennai, then do this. And if it is nothing, then write an invalid address. Reduces a lot of my typing. GitHub Copilot is awesome once again. All right, so let's see if this works. So this is the extended property patterns of C sharp 10. And I'm going to go back over here and let's try calling this and see how it actually works. So var formatted address is equal to business logic to formatted address. Uh, I think get formatted address. And I'm going to go right here, the console dot right line, get the user his, his address. There you go, which is cool. I'm not 
unhappy with the suggestion. So I think we have an address uh, without Bangalore and all those things. So probably I'm going to give the state as uh, Bangalore. I mean, the state is not Bangalore. The city uh, with Chennai because I'm from Chennai and I'm going to put Chennai here. State is Tamil Nadu and the street is Medavakam. This is the place where I was living before. Uh, now let's try running it. There we go. So it gives me that result. Medavakam, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Awesome. So this is the formatted result that you get back while you pass all these result details, which is cool. All right, so this is how we can work with the C-sharps pattern matching with the switch expression is expressions and when and how we can use all these things within our code. So this is a very, very awesome feature of C-sharp and just keep extending in every major version of C-sharp releasing. Very important to understand and we can use the exact same thing for the automation testing as well. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.